All right, y'all, it is official. What's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores coming with the official breakdown, analysis, and instant reaction and my biggest takeaways from the Washington football team's final 53-man roster. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of surprises. First, I'm going to talk about the notable cuts. I'm going to tell y'all everybody that was cut, but I'm going to go into a deeper analysis of everybody that was cut and give some logic as to why. And then, of course, we got to go position group by position group to break down who made the team. And then, of course, I got to talk about the most notable takeaways as far as this team goes. This is a very telling roster, and I'm excited, man. But before we dive into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately. And every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one, as always, please make sure you check out the rest of the channel. All of my videos are organized in playlists. I even have a comedy playlist for all of my funny videos. And for these next two weeks where the Washington football team really isn't about to give us any news other than injury updates, I'm about to be hitting y'all with all kinds of content, especially a lot of exclusive content for my channel members. So stay tuned. Without further ado, let's get it. Well, here is the official 53 man roster right here. But before we dive into that, just to let you know, as of the past two days, the Washington football team cut quarterback Steven Montez, running backs Peyton Barber and Jonathan Williams, wide receivers Tony Brown, Antonio Gandy Golden and Isaiah Wright, tight end Caleb Wilson, tackle David Sharp and David Steinmez, guard Bo Benchwell and Wes Martin, centers Keith Ishmael and John Toth, defensive ends William Bradley King and Boonmi Rotimi, defensive tackles Devaro Lawrence, Daniel Wise, and Gabe Wright, linebackers Jordan Kunijic, David Mayo, Jared Norris, and Joe Walker, cornerbacks Danny Johnson, Jimmy Moreland, Lyndon Stevens, and safeties Cole Luke and Jeremy Reeves. Just to briefly talk about the most notable names, Steven Montez, we expected that. He was on the practice squad last year. I'm pretty sure he's gonna make it to the practice squad this year as well. Peyton Barber was really interesting because we kept hearing reports over and over again that this organization loves Peyton Barber. Even though most of us as fans felt like he wasn't necessary and that Antonio Gibson and Jared Patterson can do what he did best, but better. If we need one yard, it seemed like Peyton Barber's niche was to be the guy that could get you that one yard. But with Antonio Gibson's freak athleticism and Jared Patterson's advanced running back nuance, I feel like both of those guys can literally do that, but better. Then wide receiver wise, Antonio Gandy Golden, man, a couple of months ago, I expected him not to make this team. But as of late, and with everything he was doing in training camp making plays and then going out there making plays in the preseason as well, I was surprised that he didn't make the roster. Wasn't surprised about Isaiah Wright though. Pretty good returner, but we have a lot of returners. Caleb Wilson is not a surprise at all either. He may be talented, but I mean, no other team wanted him anyway. So strategy wise, even if you do like him, you can release him and expect him to end up on your practice squad because when the Eagles waived him, nobody else wanted them but us in the nfl then not surprised by the tackles at all not surprised by the guards not surprised by the centers again because we already knew tyler larson was above keith ishmael on the depth chart and you don't keep three centers then defensive end wise william bradley king was pretty surprising to me i'm not gonna lie because he was making plays this offseason and then i'm even a little bit more surprised that shaka tony got picked over him but then again shaka tony adds some special teams value as well whereas william bradley king doesn't necessarily but William Bradley King looked really good this offseason, and I'm really excited about him as some future defensive in depth. So hopefully he makes it back to the practice squad. Defensive tackle wise, I'm pretty sure this was a really difficult decision for them because Devaro Lawrence, Daniel Wise, and Gabe Wright were all making plays in the offseason, especially in preseason games. Then linebacker wise, I mean, literally all of these four guys that were cut Jordan Kunijic, David Mayo, Jared Norris, and Joe Walker. All of those guys were pretty much brought here to be special teams guys, even though David Mayo is a very solid run stopper. So I was a little surprised by his cut because with Cole Holcomb, Jamin Davis, Khalid Hudson, and John Bostick, we don't have a certified, we know for a fact this linebacker can stop a run play on third and one type of guy. All of our guys other than John Bostick are freak athletes 
and I'm excited about their coverage ability, especially Khalid Hudson and Jamin Davis, and Colt Holcomb is getting there over time with his development and coverage. But none of our guys is just a certified headbanger, go run up to a guard or a center or a tackle and block shed and make the stop right at the line of scrimmage. We just don't have that guy on our roster. David Mayo was the only candidate we had for that, but I guess we're going stop the pass heavy. Then cornerbacks, Jimmy Moreland was a huge surprise, of course. I thought he was a direct backup to Kendall Fuller as far as slot corner goes, but I guess they feel like we do have enough versatility as far as slot corner. I mean, you technically have Cameron Curl, of course, Kendall Fuller, Benjamin St. Juice, Daryl Roberts, and even kind of Landon Collins and Kalik Hudson if you need them to. So they felt like that was a dispensable position, especially for a guy that that's pretty much all he does because we have guys that can do other things and play slot corner as well. And then, of course, Jeremy Reeves, as far as safeties go, that was the biggest surprise there. I thought he did enough to definitely make this team. If he doesn't get picked up by another team, he's for sure making this practice squad. And if it is true that you can protect four practice squad guys a week, I think Jeremy Reeves may end up being one of those guys. But now moving on to the roster. We're going to analyze the obvious things first. Starting with the quarterbacks, your three quarterbacks are Ryan Fitzpatrick, Taylor Heineke, and Kyle Allen. We all knew this and don't expect us to go get Cam Newton again. Like I've already explained in videos, I'll take Cam Newton, really anybody over Kyle Allen. He knows the system isn't a good enough excuse to me. I mean, I'll try Kyle Laletta. I'll try Cam Newton, who I feel like will actually bounce back this year, who's poised to bounce back. He looked pretty good in the preseason, honestly. Looked better in the preseason than he's looked in a minute, probably since that Seahawks game last year. I mean, virtually anybody over Kyle Allen, in my opinion, but you know, I'm pretty sure Kyle Allen's here to stay. Then running backs, you have Antonio Gibson, J.D. McKissick, Jared Patterson. Of course, the most notable thing is that we only kept three and then on top of that we kept Jared Patterson over Peyton Barber which most of us wanted I feel like almost everybody wanted that to happen but I am a little surprised that they didn't keep Forrest if they could keep Peyton Barber because they kept talking them up and up and up maybe that was just to run up his trade value in hopes of trading them it didn't happen I guess so they was just like whatever man nobody wants them we don't want them just go ahead and release them maybe we bring them back on practice squad we'll see tight ends we kept four which was interesting I thought that we would keep three Logan Thomas, John Bates were your two locks. I was assuming that it would be Samus Reyes over Ricky Seals Jones. And then Samus Reyes was confirmed to be a lock on the roster even before we finished making all of the cuts for the 53 man roster. And then Ricky Seals Jones slid in as the fourth tight end. And I'm happy about that. I like having Ricky Seals Jones as a fourth tight end, especially since Samus Reyes may not be fully ready to contribute early on. I think he can at least as a blocker. And he showed us potential with that one hand catch against the Ravens in that preseason game just a few days ago. But Ricky Seals Jones is that veteran presence along with Logan Thomas. John Bates is your clear cut tight end too, but he's still a rookie as well. So I like what they did with the tight end group a lot. Your wide receivers, seven. I knew they would keep at least six. I was leaning towards keeping seven because there was just so much talent. It was so competitive. But the surprise was, of course, like I explained, was not keeping Antonio Gandy Golden at this point. But of course, you have Terry McLaurin, Curtis Samuel, Adam Humphreys, De'Ami Brown, Cam Sims. Those were pretty much locks almost, especially McLaurin, Samuel, and Brown. And then you have Dax Milne and DeAndre Carter making it. You have DeAndre Carter. Since he's making a 53-man roster, you already know he's your starting punt returner. That's where he brings the most value in, his return, in the return game. And then Dax Milne, I'm not too surprised because... It's already been reported that they view him as the slot of the future, as our franchise slot guy once Adam Humphreys is gone. And Dax Milne is a pretty solid returner. I think he's the direct backup to DeAndre Carter as the returner on this team. The offensive line, we kept nine. Not surprised I predicted that. I predicted this exact nine as well. Charles Leno, Eric Flowers, Chase Roulier, Brandon Sheriff, Samuel Cosme, Cornelius Lucas, Wes Swice, or Sadiq Charles, and Tyler Larson. And, and really nothing super notable here except for the fact that this is just a really versatile group. Sadiq Charles can play every position on the O-line. Tyler Larson can play both guard positions and center. Wes Swicer can play either guard positions. Cornelius Lucas can play either tackle positions. Samuel Cosme can play any guard or any tackle position, but he's already certified starting right tackle of the future. Eric Flowers can play either guard position as well. Charles Leno can play left or right tackle. 
So there's so much versatility here to where like if there's an injury, we can move guys around and we're good. We not only have starters that can play multiple positions, but our backups can do the same as well. And with us having so much positional flex in the offensive line, that's what allowed us to release a David Sharp and a Keith Ishmael, only keeping nine offensive linemen rather than 10 or 11. And then defensive line, we kept nine. You have Chase Young, Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, Montez Sweat, Matt Ioannidis, Tim Settle, James Smith-Williams, and those were pretty much my top locks, even though James Smith-Williams wasn't really a lock, but that's one of the guys that were on the outside looking in that I felt like was the safest out of the rest of the group. And then you have Shaka Tony. Again, I loved what I saw from him in preseason. I feel like he has the potential to lose some weight and become a really good Sam linebacker, honestly. But as of right now, he's an edge rusher. He's also a special teams contributor as well. And then Casey Tuhill, again, like I've said in videos, I'm not too surprised that he made the team because they loved him all off season. He's just been hurt recently, so we haven't really had a chance to look at him in preseason. But even with him being hurt, it was reported that they still liked him enough to keep him, and that's what they did. Then linebackers four, of course the most notable thing is that we only kept four linebackers. I think this is one of the most notable things out of the entire roster. This is one of the biggest things that stands out, because how do you only keep four linebackers? I believe we kept six last year, so this just shows we're about to run heavy nickel packages, all kinds of sub packages, dime, whatever. We're about to have two linebackers on the field a lot if you only plan on keeping four, because if you plan on consistently playing three, then that means all four linebackers on your roster are projected to play at least a couple of snaps every game just as a rotation so if we only have four we plan on deploying only two linebackers a lot and as of right now Cole Holcomb and John Bostock are probably your two starting linebackers even though I hope by the time the Chargers game comes Jamin Davis is ready to dethrone John Bostick. And then once that happens, once Jamin Davis is ready to step up as a top tier linebacker mentally, instinctually, there's really no need for a John Bostick. You're better off getting the more athletic guy because John Bostick's only role on this team is to be the quarterback of the defense. If Jamin Davis can learn that with his freak athleticism, combine the two, John Bostick literally has no role here, just like Peyton Barber. Peyton Barber's one niche was to get you one yard. Once we have running backs that can do that, along with other things like catch the ball out of the backfield, there was no need for Peyton Barber. So same thing with John Bostick. We're just waiting for Jamin Davis to develop mentally, to take some big strides forward as far as nuance, instincts, processing skills, all of that type of stuff. Play recognition. So we'll see. Again, I'm a little surprised by the David Mayo cut because he was a certified run stopper, probably our most certified run stopper on our entire team so i don't necessarily think we'll be weak against the run but with our sub packages we're just gonna have to figure it out but this does sound like cameron curl and landon collins will be on the field together a lot that's one of my biggest takeaways from the fact that we only kept four linebackers and also one of the reasons we only kept four linebackers because most teams their best special teams coverage players are linebackers and we do have some really good ones in the linebacker group. Again, David Mayo, Jared Norris are huge standouts. Tress Way even talked about how great they were even when they played for other teams. But on top of that, we also have some really good special teams players in our secondary. We have some special team studs in our DB group. So that gave us the flexibility to not force ourselves to keep some of these linebackers when we don't have to. They didn't want to just keep a Jared Norris and a David Mayo just because of special teams. They have guys in the DB group that can not only contribute on the defensive side of the ball, but can also contribute in special teams as well. Again, positional flex, not just being able to play corner and safety, different types of corner, different types of safety, but also being able to contribute not only on the defensive side of the ball, but on special teams as well. But definitely, ideally, right now, in a nickel package, you'll have Kendall Fuller, William Jackson III on the outside, Bobby McCain, Cameron Curl, Landon Collins at safety, and then Jamin Davis and Cole Holcomb. And then on top of that, maybe Kendall Fuller in the slot, William Jackson, Benjamin St. Juice outside, and then Curl and Collins, Davis and Holcomb. We'll see. It's going to be a lot of interesting combinations out there. And then moving to the cornerbacks, you have William Jackson III, Kendall Fuller, Benjamin St. Juice, Daryl Roberts, Torrey McTire, and Troy Apke. The main surprise here is keeping Daryl Roberts over at Jimmy Moreland. I wasn't surprised by Troy Apke like I kept telling y'all. He's arguably our best special teams gunner. That is invaluable. That is priceless. He is a special teams ace, so I'm not surprised they kept Troy Apke, especially since now going from being one of the worst safeties of all time to being actually a decent backup corner it just all made sense for him to make the 53 man roster at the end of the day but again choosing daryl roberts who is really versatile so in that aspect i'm not surprised but jimmy moreland i feel like is a better just slot 
corner than Daryl Roberts at the one thing that we really need either of those two guys to play. I feel like Jimmy Moreland was the better player, but Daryl Roberts is the more versatile player because he can pretty much play anywhere in the secondary. Then your safeties, you have Landon Collins, Cameron Curl, Bobby McCain, DeShazer Everett, Derek Forrest. Again, I'm surprised that Jeremy Reeves didn't make it. I thought if anything, they were released DeShazer Everett, but I guess they wanted to make sure they had a dependable backup that can step in if there's an injury. Landon Collins gets hurt or Bobby McCain gets hurt. You don't love DeShazer Everett in strong safety. You don't love him in free safety, but he's decent at both. He's not a pure strong safety like Landon Collins and Cameron Curl. He's not a pure free safety like Bobby McCain and Jeremy Reeves, but he's a decent backup at both. So him making the roster doesn't exactly surprise me. I'm just surprised at the fact that it was over Jeremy Reeves. And then Derek Forrest just has so much potential with him being a freak athlete and they assume that he will be a strong special teams contributor as well so that's why he made the roster and then of course your three specialists are dustin hopkins tressway and cameron cheeseman and i've already gone through most of the notable parts of the roster and explained why or why not things happen but also what's notable is that we have 15 undrafted free agents on our final 53 man roster that's really interesting you have tight ends samus reyes and ricky seals jones running back jared patterson jd mckissick defensive end casey two hill wide receivers Adam Humphreys, DeAndre Carter, and Cam Sims, safety to Shazer Everett, of course, punter Tress Way, quarterbacks Taylor Heineke and Kyle Allen, cornerback Tory McTire, tackle Cornelius Lucas, and center Tyler Larson. All of these guys were undrafted free agents. Now, granted, a lot of them are veterans, so it's not like we just brought in 50 undrafted free agents at the same time this year, and they're all just really raw guys. So it's nothing to panic about at all. It's just really interesting that we found gems outside of the draft granted a lot of these guys were drafted by other teams and we brought them in as free agents but still it just goes to show that undrafted free agents can contribute in a special way it's not like the only successful guys in the nfl are guys that get drafted same as Reyes is a really special case though but everybody else i mean jared patterson was directly our only undrafted free agent this year immediately after the draft and everybody else was picked up by another team or the, by the old regime with the jay gruden there and they just found a way to make this team and they're strong contributors i mean a lot of these guys are gonna play significant meaningful minutes for us especially like adam humphreys your starting slot receiver deandre carter Cornelius lucas as a swing tackle if an injury happens ricky seals jones at tight end the best punter in the nfl tress way Kim Sims, again, of course, Jared Patterson, and then Taylor Heineke. It's really interesting. And then lastly, just to let you know, Chase Young is still the second youngest player on our entire defense. That is crazy when you think about it. He's only 38 days older than rookie safety Derek Forrest, who is the youngest defensive player on the entire team. Chase Young is just one of them guys, bro. They come around once every 10, 15 years, maybe never again. I mean, it is crazy. He is literally the second youngest defensive player on the team, but he's also the leader. He's the Ray Lewis. He's the Brian Dawkins talking the most trash to the other team. He's the most hype on the sideline for even the guys on the back end of the roster, like the guys that are going to end up on the practice squad. They make a play in practice or in preseason. He's running up and down the sideline like we won the Super Bowl off the play. I mean, that's a true leader right there. And as long as nothing crazy happens as far as money or injury, we have him for at least the next 10 years. And that's a great guy gotta build around man i'm telling you but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video please like this video if you liked it if you learned anything please subscribe if you haven't hit the bell next to the subscription button if you haven't as well again definitely get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video how do you feel about this roster who are you mad that they didn't keep and which player would you replace that made the 53 man roster for those players that you wanted to keep that we didn't also what players are out there that you want to bring in like a kj wright cam newton kyle laletta all of these guys getting released from other teams and do you agree or disagree with a lot of the points that i made in this video also please like this video if you liked it if you learned anything and as always man i appreciate all of the support man big time big shouts out to everybody that donates to the channel man really appreciate y'all and a special shout out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors whose name you see scrolling on the screen right now really really appreciate y'all man i'll catch y'all later i'm out